This is clever lighting system, because I can't see you, but I can hear you. <laughs> Do that again. <laughs> Um, well, this is a sort of speech. That's actually somebody else's speech. Well, I think, <laughs> have, they, have they given it yet? I think, <laughs> I think you'd do better with that one. <laughs> well, I think the best way to begin a speech is to ask any questions. <laughs> I, well, can I ask you a couple of questions? Oh, good. Because I was, I mean, because you were my mentor from the very beginning, I kind of assumed that all professors took their <laughs> students to, to conferences and let them be in the middle of all the research meetings. But I, I've come to understand that you actually had a very special way of dealing with students, and what, what was your philosophy about how, how you dealt with the students? The relationship is... I think I just figured that the best thing they could do was what I had done, which is grown up with erector sets and tinker toys, and um, if uh, you wanted something, uh, that didn't matter because there was something else you could make that would be as good or better. And uh, that worked until I became a professor and an associate professor. And the magic stopped around the time when you become a full professor. <laughs> and, uh, and then you can ruin the intuitions of thousands of students <laughs> <laughs> all in parallel. But uh, so the, if you want to, if, if you have a protege and you want them to learn something, then you should put them in a situation where they already know more than the other people in the group and they'll keep growing. Uh, if you put them in a situation where they're dominated by so-called experts, they, chances are that if they do discover something, it'll be something very old and obsolete. And, oh, I'm just rambling. Uh, don't believe anything I say. <laughs> So, so when I arrived at the AI lab, it Danny seemed- Danny just fixed things. <laughs> <laughs> he, he saw anything that was half finished. And this would be because the project didn't work or heaven knows why, but he would assume that it must have had a good idea and he finished it. And uh, I couldn't keep up with him to this day. <laughs> Sorry. Well, so, <laughs> so actually it leads perfectly in, in, into the next thing because I know that in, in those days we all felt like we were making leaps and bounds every day in artificial intelligence. And I know you've been frustrated with the progress lately and, and have some ideas about how we should be making progress. Yeah, things have been a little slow for 15 years, but they're perking up again a little, I think, I hope. Well, we have something that we would like to present to you, which if we can bring it out on stage. Um, oh good, I was hoping it wasn't three big white chairs. <laughs> Well, mm. 
So what we have here is a product of the Media Lab, and it's actually kind of an historic artifact in itself. It's, it's a gift <laughs> from the students and the faculty, and it was a creation of Neri Oxman's group and the Glass Lab. And so... Ooh. <laughs> So I have, a, I have a, a official thing that I am to read here, which is, on behalf of all of the students and faculty at the MIT Media Lab, including the faculty members who are your students, I would like to present this token of our appreciation, this first 3D printed sculpture of transparent glass. We present this sculpture to you as a symbol of our gratitude for your clarity of insight, your playfulness, your intellectual generosity, we are, and our gratitude for your ideas, <laughs> your enthusiasm, your guidance and inspiration. Thank you for challenging us. Thank you for teaching us to think. Mm. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. What a beautiful thing. What does it do? <laughs> all right, well, I, I, once again, I, I want you all to... Uh, <laughs> thank you, Marvin. Oh, sure.